Um, welcome to fifth week Michaelmas term student council. Um, uh, I'm Anisha Fruit, Queen's College, she, her, chair of council. Um, thank you for attending. Just to let you guys know that this will be uh, recorded and if you could, when you speak, please make sure that you have a microphone with you and speak into the microphone. Um, and when you, uh, when you introduce yourself, please say your name, college, and your pronouns. Um, so we're just going to start. Um, we'll approve the minutes from the previous council minutes, uh, from the previous council meeting. Um, so are there any objections or matters arising from the previous minutes? Uh, seeing none, that passes. Um, and now elections in council. Um, I believe we have uh, an election for uh, elections committee. So all those that are husting, would you like to come up? Hi, so, so for elections in council, um, Alex, our returning representative's apologies, he isn't able to make it, so I will be um, deputy RO for today. Um, so we have two positions going for today, the first for scrutiny committee um, and the second for elections committee. Um, unfortunately, due to the number of candidates we have for elections committee, we won't be able to um, vote in the room, but I'll give you instructions on that when we come to it. So the first will be for scrutiny <coughs> committee, um, and we'll be voting with voting pads. Um, our candidate is Rosie Sauerbert. Would we, would anyone like to see a hust? I said she's not here. Yeah. <laughs> can we, can we sort of do that? Can we can sort of do that? <laughs> Just go straight to bed. Yeah. Okay, so, <laughs> so Rosie isn't here. Um, so we will go straight to a vote without a hust. And she has sent her apologies. Um, so this is what she sent in as her reasons for election. Um, and now we'll move to vote. So one is for Rosie and two is for Ron. And if you would like to vote now. Raise your hand if you still to vote. Seeing none. Oh. <laughs> 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 okay, and everybody has voted. Not say now. Seeing none. So yes, Rosie gets that position. Um, so the second co position is for elections committee, and we have three nominees. We have Adam Ellison, Finn Conway, and uh, Eli, El Eli? Ailey. Ailey McFarley, and apologies for pronunciation. Um, would anyone like to see her? Seeing one. So can I have the three candidates to the front? <laughs> so we can have Adam first. Adam. Adam. We're neither of you. Adam. <laughs> okay, so who do we have? Yeah, sure. Um, I mean, this is, I don't really have much more to say than what I've said on here. Um, I'm familiar with election procedures. Um, I'm involved in a sort of electoral review from an uh, external organisation at the moment and have been returning officers for other organisations, so um, both at the university and outside of it. So, um, yeah, I mean, I, <laughs> I think I'm qualified for the position and I want to get more involved in the SU, so... So I'm Ailey McFarlane, um, she, her, from Trinity. 
Um, so I've also been involved with uh, various societies and with many different kinds of elections in Oxford student politics. Um, during my undergrad here, um, I've then been away for a while and I'm now back and doing a defil. So I've got a bit of um, space and separation from the kind of current politics going on in Oxford. Um, and I like elections so much, I'm actually studying elections for my DPhil, so I'm pretty keen. <laughs> so I would like to get involved. Thank you. Okay. And do we have any questions for the candidates? Um, the questions must be made to both candidates. One at the front. Uh, if it's not rude to ask. Sorry, Lucas. Oh, Lucas, uh, uh, what, uh, Oxford, I see. He, him. Um, <laughs> If you were doing a DPhil, what would your DPhil's title be? <laughs> oh, jeez. Uh, <laughs> uh, I mean, I'm still a third-year undergrad at the moment, so um, I don't know. I've probably something to do with uh, Homer, the Iliad. Uh, that's probably where my interests lie most of all. I'm a classicist, so... Um, oh, and I forgot to say at the start of mine, he, he, him. <laughs> so my DPhil is on um, class identity and how that's influencing new divides in class politics in the UK. So lots of stuff on UK elections over the last sort of 50 years or so. Any further questions for the candidates? Seeing one in the middle there. You're Alexeo Christchurch, he, him. Uh, considering that we have a pronounced lack of a returning officer and some candidates, do you believe that there should be disciplinary procedures in place to ensure their presence at elections uh, and similar events? Do you mean should there be disciplinary procedures for the returning officer not being here today? Uh, no, in general. Oh, in general. <laughs> uh, I mean, yes, probably. If, if, if you're a returning officer, then you should probably be here. I mean, it's, there's no problem, I don't think, in Alex not being here today because, um, like, you know, if he sent apologies and everything, that's fine. I don't expect disciplinary measures to be taken about against him, but um, I don't know exactly what you're referring to, but um, <laughs> um, I wouldn't be opposed to disciplinary measures being taken against people not doing their jobs. I would agree with Finn. I don't think this one case is yeah. a case of someone not doing their jobs, but if someone isn't doing their jobs, that's a very different situation. Thank you. Any further questions for the candidate? Seeing none. Okay, so um, as I mentioned, we won't be able to do this vote in the room with your voting pads. Instead, votes will be um, cast online. And so you will be receiving in a few minutes um, an, a link in your in your email inbox um, and you'll be able to vote within the next few minutes so keep an eye out for that um, and vote when you're able to. Have the handbook over? So I'll hand back over to the chair. Okay, so now we're doing reports to count. Uh, sorry, do you have a question or? Um, it's 24 hours, right? Or Um, yeah, so 24 hours from now. Um, yeah, just make sure you vote. And um, Yeah, so if we could have reports to council, if the SABs could come up. And please keep it short. Thank you. Uh, hi, Joe Inwood, Oxford SUV Him. Really quick for me, um, I've just posted on Facebook my video report to council, so watch that. It's basically my report. Um, but in a more coherent sense, and also missing out things that I didn't say, I'm working with VP Welfare on uh, our mental health strategy for the year. We're lobbying the university. You've heard this from me before. Um, in fact, I'm just going to pass on to Lucas because you all know it. Cheers. Hi, I'm Lucas. I'm your Vice President for Access and Academic Affairs. Check out my video report, which will probably be coming out tomorrow because I didn't film it yesterday because I was ill. Um, I have been doing a lot of work this last two weeks on um, race and admissions and looking at the data on that and how it's going and what the university is doing. Um, are they doing anything wrong? I kind of think they are. Um, and I'm also looking at um, lots of work on accessibility uh, uh, in libraries and making sure that there's transparency of information uh, for applicants. Uh, so those are two of my big priorities this term. Oh, and also, over the next two weeks, look out for a consultation coming around on access. Thank you, Lucas. 
uh, Alison D'Ambrosia, she, her. The most exciting thing that's happened this week um, are around libraries. The Baldian Library is really influenced by what we've been saying on mental health and wants to do a lot of mental health things during exam period starting next term. Um, and is really excited about that, and is going to give us money for it, yay. Um, and the second thing is that we've secured a lot of input in the Radcliffe Science Library, which is going under a big refurb for a graduate study space and a graduate common room. So if anybody wants to get involved in feeding into what that's going to look like, let me know. Hello, everyone. Um, I'm Rosanna. Um, is Wardham in the room? Put your hands up. If a brazen is in the room. No, Braze knows they're too busy pledging, you see. <laughs> That's why they're not here. <laughs> That's the most important update, to be honest, out of all of us. Um, Braze knows are currently in the lead, and pledging closes at midnight tonight. I'm not going to update on anything else, because that's the most exciting thing. Hi, Council. My name's Ellie. She's A, VP for Welfare and Equal Ops. And we are starting to set the agenda on mental health within the university, which is super, super exciting. And we've been planning an external meeting next week to get all external stakeholders from Oxford Your Mind, etc., to come and have a chat about what we're doing in the university. Aside from that, we, I've also started work on reforming the disciplinary procedures for sexual violence um, and harassment cases, so that's super exciting. So keep a lookout. Um, are there any questions to the officers? Yep. I'm Eric, he, him, you, Niv. So this is for um, Ellie of welfare. Um, our JCL is having some difficulty sourcing dental dams um, and the JCL is wondering if the SES made any progress on getting dental dams. This is a question that I've been asked a lot. <laughs> I've never been asked more about dental dams in my life. <laughs> there is a national shortage of dental dams. Um, <laughs> <laughs> there is a national supply shortage of dental dams, so we can't get our hands on any, and the closest that we could get would be on eBay from really dodgy sellers, so we're not going to do that. Um, what our current advice is, we have a link um, from a website which shows how you can turn a condom into a dental dam, and I'll be putting that on the Welfare Rep page soon, and kind of telling JCR presidents and MCR presidents to kind of spread the information, as it were. Thanks. <laughs> Any other questions? Um, yep. Uh, you're Alexei Christchurch again. Uh, in light of Brexit, uh, is there expect uh, he him? Uh, is there uh, expectation of there being a condom shortage in the next year as well? I really appreciate the concern over contraceptives in the room. Um, it shows that you all are very aware of your sexual health. That's really important. Um, I don't want to comment on what's going to happen after Brexit, but I'm sure the SEU will be adaptable and we will react in the best way we can. But yes, we might have an emergency condom plan in place. <laughs> yeah. we, we'll stock up in advance of the 29th of March. Yep. Um, and over there. Uh, hello, uh, it's Matthew Judson, uh, Lady Margaret Hall, he, him. Uh, I'm asking on behalf of uh, one of my members who uh, brought a motion to the last council about uh, condemning the visit of uh, Alice Vidal to the Oxford Union. Uh, and uh, it's not something that any of you have mentioned. Obviously, uh, it's been announced that she won't be coming at this time, so I'm not sure what there, are, there is a lot to say about it, but um, I wondered whether any of you could comment on what you've done to follow up on that motion, uh, and if you've got any comments on that situation. Hi again, Council. Um, so I arranged a meeting with the Oxford Union president for... Uh, two days ago, and as soon as Alice Vedel was uninvited, the Oxford, S uh, the Oxford Union president cancelled that meeting and has emailed me back saying, shall we arrange a date at a more convenient time in the next few weeks? I've responded and said, I'd be very happy to invite you to the student union itself and come to our offices, and I've received no response to date. Uh, some of our sabbatical team, uh, Kat Walton, was also very 
involved in the planning of that and, and discussing that, but unfortunately not here today. So, yeah. Um, any more questions? Uh, seeing none. Okay, thank you. Okay, so we're now moving on to motions. Um, there is uh, one motion below the line, which is regulations changes. Um, but if Joe could come up and explain the uh, campaigns review. Hi, Council. Joe Inwood, Oxford SU, he, him. Um, so thank you very much for coming this evening. I'm really sorry about the weather. Um, and thank you for making it all the way out here to Worcester. Um, apart from Ephraim, who lives upstairs. Um, the campaign interview has been going on for quite a while now, and this is a combination of a lot of um, work within the organisation to make our campaigns absolutely at the heart of everything we do and improve how we organise them within our governance. So you'll see attached all the bylaw changes that are proposed. Um, I talked about this at Council two weeks ago, but the idea behind these changes is to make it far easier for people to come up with new projects and ideas and get support from the student union uh, for innovative things they want to do in Oxford. Um, and to give council kind of a reason to be, if you like, um, kind of breathe some life back into this forum and give council kind of ownership of, of projects and real things that are campaigning for change in the university. Um, believes one says that campaigns are a vital part of the work of this student union. I think that's completely true. We wouldn't be much of an SU if we didn't have campaigns. And I think this uh, piece of work really kind of embeds campaigns within the student union really firmly and for once actually gives campaigns an understanding of the staff support they will receive as a kind of base package uh, that will be applied consistently in future when it hasn't been in the past. Um, there are also funding, which isn't mentioned in this. Um, this these changes will be applicable for next year, so for 2019-20, um, and all the budgets will actually be set at the same time for once, which will be at the end of Trinity, well in advance of the academic year, so campaigns know what they're working with and they know how they're going to uh, create change in the university um, well in advance of the Freshers' Week period, which can be very busy. Um, I'm really keen to hear from you if you've got any questions about these changes, because they are quite quite big, and I appreciate not everyone will have had a chance to read through all the bylaws, um, which are quite long, um, but yeah, the reason behind these changes is that um, at the moment, campaigns are not quite flexible enough in terms of how easy it is to set up new ones, basically, and uh, I think we want to welcome kind of innovation and then also really embed our existing liberation and sectional campaigns uh, into the work of the Student Union. So that's uh, probably about it from me, um, but yeah, over to you guys. Um, any short factual questions for the proposer? Uh, yeah. Gwen Antel, St. John's College, she, her. Um, this is sort of tying back to last council when somebody asked the same question about funding for campaigns. Um, and it was clarified that there'd be a minimum threshold that any campaign would get and then some mechanism of requesting sort of a top up for very active campaigns. I briefly looked through the documents set out and didn't actually see any sums listed. So what are the thresholds of funding that campaigns will receive? So um, for this year, there'll be no change. Um, those budgets are already approved and kind of done deals. Um, and the 400 or 500 pound settlement that campaigns have currently will continue exactly the same as it is at the moment. Um, what will be different is that campaigns will be able to apply for more funding uh, for kind of additional kind of specific work or projects. So in my presentation back in third week, we kind of had the three different um, categories and the, one of them was projects and a campaign can uh, come to council with an idea for one of those projects and kind of get top up funding if that makes sense and there will be a pot of money which campaigns can apply for to do that um, which is really exciting I think because it means that campaigns that are really active and really busy um, can do more and can do more than what their total kind of cap budget is um, that's quite a rambly answer but is that sort of answering yeah cheers any more short factual questions uh, long substantive questions um, any opposition to the motion? Uh, no opposition, so the motion passes. Okay. Oh, and the email's been sent out so everyone can vote, by the way. Um, so is there any other business? 
Seeing none, I think that closes this meeting of council. Thank you for attending. <laughs>